We're ready for Bible today, being Tuesday, May 5th. Today in Bible, we're going to read in the New Testament from the book of John 7, 17. How do we know the Bible is true? We're also going to move on to Esther petitions the king today. So we're going to find out what happens when she goes before the king. So let's look at John chapter 7, verse 17, in the New Testament, chapter 17. I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 7, verse 17 says, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So what Jesus is saying here is that we as Christians, when we put doing God's will first in our lives and we ask for the repentance of for the forgiveness of sins, we repent, excuse me, we ask for forgiveness. When we put that first in our lives, the scriptures will be opened up to us. God, by his spirit, will open up the truth to us. We will know, we will by faith read this book and we will apply it to our lives. We should desire each day to open up this book and to read to find out what God says about our lives and how we should handle, you know, events that come along. When we have things that are, you know, happen that are sad or, um, you know, things when, you know, maybe someone hurts your feelings or you have hard feelings with someone. How do we, how do we forgive and how do we, you know, conduct ourselves so that we bring honor and glory to God? So many things here, so many life lessons in this book. So let's go now to Esther. Esther petitions the king. If you will remember yesterday, we finished up with Mordecai asking Esther to go before King Ahasuerus to save the Jews. Wow, what a task this is going to be for Esther. She said, I'm not even supposed to, I can't do that. I'm not even supposed to go before him for 30 days. And we all remember that if someone just went into, you know, the king's chambers, um, you know, without his permission, without him saying, you know, please go get them and have them brought in, I mean, you could be killed for that. So that was a, I mean, this is a big risk that Esther is about to take. So she goes into fasting and prayer. Her and um, her maidens here, the Jewish people, fast and pray for three days for Esther, for wisdom about what she needs to do. So today we're going to be in Esther. We're going to move on to chapter 5. And we're going to be going through verses 1 through 14. So, um, you know, this, this time is still very scary for the Jewish people. They, you know, don't know what's going to happen to them. They just know that they've been told that within a year, they're all going to be killed. Haman has really orchestrated all of this, all because of Mordecai. His hatred and rage toward Mordecai has caused this, you know, this plot to come about. So Esther, after the three days... She you know, begins to get ready. She starts, you know, putting on her crown and, you know, getting up the courage here. She's, she's weak. She remembers she hasn't eaten. She's only had water for three days in her fast. And she's ready to go to the king. She is, um, she's scared because she knows that this could be her death. So I'm going to show you a picture of her there. She's walking in. Oh, he's pointing at her. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So Esther opens the door and she walks into the king's chambers. He's sitting there. He looks up and he says, Esther, he is so stricken by her beauty. 
he, you know, remember, I mean, there's something special about Esther. She has such a sweet spirit about her, and she's very beautiful. So when he looks up and he sees her, he says, come on in. He reaches out his scepter to her, saying, you're safe. I accept you. Come in. Whew. First hurdle she had to jump over, right? So she's into the, the king's chamber. She's there. She has his attention. What does she need? The king spoke. He said, what do you want, Queen Esther? What is your request? You shall have it even to the half of my kingdom. Esther held a very special place in his heart. Esther was not yet ready to ask him to spare the Jews. But she comes to him and she says, Well, what I would like for to do is I would like to have a banquet. And I would like to have you to come. And I would also like to have Haman to come. King Ahasuerus said, Sure, I, I would be glad to do that. And I'll have uh, a message sent to Haman to come. Absolutely. We'll do that. So Esther, she leaves. She has a plan here. Remember, now she's been praying. She's been asking God what to do. So she asks him to the banquet. He accepts. Haman's going to come. And she leaves. Both the king and Haman arrive for the banquet. And here they are. King Ahasuerus and Haman, and there's Esther, and they're, you know, they're in the banquet, and, and this is great, and, you know, this is a, a wonderful time. I mean, it was, I mean, it was not out of the ordinary to have, you know, this great feast and to be together. I mean, we, you know, we get together in our families, and we eat, and we talk, and it doesn't really have to be a reason, right? It could be someone's birthday or Christmas, but we just sometimes get together and eat and enjoy each other's company. No doubt it was difficult for Esther to be there with Haman, knowing what his plan was. But Haman, he didn't suspect a thing. He was just so happy that he was there with the king and queen, he could have cared less about what else was going on. At the banquet, King Ahasuerus again, he said, Esther, he said, what was your request? Whatever it is. Even if it's to the half of my kingdom, I'll grant it. Esther still is not ready to reveal her request. She wanted to wait one more day. She said, my request is that if it please the king, let the king and Haman come to me, come with me tomorrow to another banquet, and I'll give you my request then. I'll tell it to you then. Well, this is kind of odd, but again, like I said, it was not unusual for it, it, you know, for them to have a couple of days of a banquet. You know, you kind of wanted people to have a good full tummy and be happy and then ask the question, right? So she wanted to be sure that, you know, everyone was kind of in a good mood before she, you know, lets everyone know what's going on. So God gives Esther the wisdom and she arranges for another banquet. Well, Haman, he is so excited. He leaves this banquet and he goes home. And as he's going home, he walks by, oh, I don't have that one again, but he walks by the king's gate and there's Mordecai again. And as he walks by Mordecai, Mordecai doesn't bow to him. So, you know, he was in a really good mood when he left. Um, Esther and the king, he walks by Mordecai and he gets mad again. One person just ruins his day. Hmm. So, you know, Haman walks home and as he's, I'll show you him here, he's, he thinks a lot of himself. Look at all of his gold rings and all of his gold here, gold. He's got, you know, these nice uh, green robe on. Remember, we talked about color. If, um, you know, being in clothing, you know, was a mark of being very wealthy. Um, the dyes that were put into the clothing was very special. I mean, you had to have money to buy green and purple.
bolts, you know, in your in your clothing. So Haman he goes home and he's trying to, you know, be happy. And as he gets home, he starts talking to his family. And and they're like, Well, did you have a good day? And he said, Oh yes, I had a great day. Esther invited me to a banquet, just you know, her. Just um she was there. King Ahasuerus was there, and I was there. And not only that, she's invited me to come back tomorrow for another banquet, just us three. He said, something spectacular has got to be getting ready to happen. They've got some big plan in there, including me. He said, it was wonderful. And tomorrow, I'm going to, then he got mad. And he said, you know what? He said, I was walking home, and I walked by the king's gate when I left, and that Mordecai wouldn't bow to me. And it infuriates me that he will not bow to me like I said. So he went from being super happy to angry. He is just consumed with, with Mordecai. But, you know, this is sin, and, and that's what happens. You know, the devil, he can get that thought in your mind, and he can just bring it over and over. Well, one of Haman's um, guests said, hmm, don't worry about it. You know that in within a year's time that, you know, they'll all be dead. And um, he said, I've got an idea. He told Haman, he said, why don't you have a gallow made 50 cubits high? Ask the king for permission to hang Mordecai on the gallows tomorrow before you go to the queen's banquet. Then you can dine with the king and queen with a merry heart, knowing that Mordecai is dead. Haman said, hey, I haven't thought of that. I'll just go ahead and get rid of him, get him out of the way, and then later on, all of the Jews will be killed. Perfect. That is a perfect plan. So, Eagerly, Haman, he summons the men to come. Oh, sorry. He summons the men to come, and they begin to build the gallows here. There you go. This is where he wants to kill Mordecai for not bowing to him. And he wants it high up so that everyone can see what he's doing. He wants everyone to be able to witness this. And to know what has happened. So the workers quickly assemble it. This is about 80 feet high up in the air. It would be a lesson to all the other Jews to make them afraid. Hey, don't, don't say anything against Haman. He'll have you killed. But it was just a plan to control them. Thrilled that he would soon be rid of Mordecai, Haman looked at the gallows. Tomorrow morning, he would get permission from the king to hang Mordecai. But Haman's going to be in for a great surprise. Mordecai is not the one in danger here. Now, we're going to um, pause there. Tomorrow will be Wednesday, so Miss Judy will have chapel. But on Thursday, we're going to find out what's going to happen. Mordecai is... Um, He's not the one that's going to perish here. Haman has been lifted up in pride. And the Bible says that, you know, pride, it, it's not good to have. We talked about this in class. You know, some of you guys are, you know, you, well, a lot of you, most of you play sports, you dance, um, you know, sing. You all have talents, different talents, but we all have talents. And in and of ourselves, do we have anything? No. Those talents, those gifts, whatever they are, whether they be in athletics, whether they're in arts, whatever they are, are God-given. And God does not want us to be lifted up in pride because outside of him we're nothing. And Haman is lifted up in pride. So God's going to have judgment waiting for him, and we'll find out Thursday what happens. So let's pray, and let's ask God to bless us this day. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. God, we thank you for 
Lord, another day of life. God, thank you for health. Lord, thank you for the school year that we've had. Dear Lord, thank you that we could come together this morning, Lord, and study the scripture. Lord, look at these lessons, Lord, and just see how those before us, Lord, what they when they've done things, Lord, that are displeasing to you, God, what, what their consequences were. And God, just help us to be mindful, Lord, when we're making our choices to look to the Bible and say, if this person did it this way, what happened? If that person did it that way, what happened? Just, Lord, keep those truths close to our heart. Lord, I just ask that you bless each one today. God, help our subjects to come easily to us today. God, bless all the students and teachers today, Lord, throughout the land, Lord, um, as we're still um, remote learning and teaching, Lord. God, we just love you. We thank you for protecting us, Lord. We thank you for our families. God, thank you for, Lord, just the gift of life. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die for us. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I think we'll be ready for math next.